live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Crime is up in San Antonio, but not every kind of crime. Fortunately, as this chart here shows, homicides are one area that is down year over year. Even still, they're higher than they've been in recent past. Garrett Berger dives into the 2023 crime, strat crime stats San Antonio police unveiled today. Between 2022 and 2023, crime overall in San Antonio went up 2%, driven by one crime in particular. Car thefts jumped by more than half, with more than 19,000 vehicles stolen in all. Various Kia and Hyundai models made up four out of every 10 cars boosted. What's driving that was that TikTok video that came out instructing people on how to steal the Kia. Police Chief William McManus says cars are stolen for a variety of reasons, often to be used in other crimes. I can't tell you the number of times that we've gotten a, gotten a plate number, have run it to find out that, that it's stolen. To the chief, the good news is that violent crime is down compared to the year before. Murders are down, certain assaults are down. Homicides in particular plummeted from 231 down to 165, the department says. But how much is that really? The spike in 2022 was driven largely by a single mass casualty event in which 53 migrants being smuggled in a stifling hot trailer died. And though 2023's tally is much lower, Historical data from the FBI shows it's still among the most deadly years since the mid-90s. I've always said that homicides are, a, a, a lot of it has to do with risky behavior. Of the known factors for last year's homicides, arguments topped the list. The family and intimate partners were second. But for many homicides, the cause was unknown. McManus says they could close more violent crimes if more witnesses would share what they know. Trying to, to, um, eliminate as much as we can the fear of talking with the police, of working with the police, of reporting to the police things that are happening in their neighborhoods. That's the challenge. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's turn to the weather now. Look outside with live cam just above freezing at this hour. Another very cold one, but we're going to get even colder, Adam. Yeah, and, and we were fortunate we actually made it above freezing and contrary to what we had yesterday. So baby steps upward in terms of our afternoon temperatures. We started at 19 today, only made it to 36 for the high temperature officially in San Antonio. At most locations across our area, we're just above freezing this afternoon. Now notice our temperature trend tonight quickly falling off. By 9 o'clock, we're at 27. By 11 p.m., we're at 24. Tomorrow morning, 16 degrees in downtown San Antonio. We're talking 12 in Bulverde, 14 Converse in Stinson, 8 in Bandera, 10 in Comfort. Coldest temperatures yet with this, with this cold snap tonight. We'll talk about another temperature swing and promising rain chances in a bit. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Adam. This cold snap outside causing issues inside for at least one local school. Earlier today, we got an email from an Oak Creek Elementary School parent in Comal ISD saying that teachers there messaged parents to tell them that some classrooms were as cold as 51 degrees. That parent told us they were encouraged to come pick up their kids. So we reached out to the district to ask about this problem. A Comal ISD spokesperson told KSAT that Oak Creek Elementary School was monitored on on Sunday and Monday, and that the issue today was related to a faulty control panel. The spokesperson confirmed the heat is back on and working and that, quote, if there is any indication that heat is not functioning properly, we will let parents know before school starts. For a complete breakdown of Wednesday's school schedule changes all over San Antonio and the Hill Country, you can scan this QR code right here or find that list on KSAT.com. Now to the very latest on the shakeup at the San Antonio Fire Department. Two weeks after Fire Chief Charles Hood stepped down over inappropriate and offensive comments, new allegations surface about others in his department. The president of the union, Joe Jones, calling it, quote, management mafia, end quote, where members were bullied, targeted, even oppressed if they spoke up. Patty Santos live with a closer look at the claims of the negative culture that's been developing in the department from the fire union. Patty. 
That's right, Steve. Joe Jones says the San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association president says there are numerous complaints from members saying fear of speaking up is pervasive in the San Antonio Fire Department. Jones claims former Chief Charles Hood turned a blind eye to the problem and was apathetic, an apathetic leader allowing the culture to exist. Now, he claims members have specific allegations and in instances in which they were targeted and had their careers destroyed by the administration. He says the environment has led to low morale. Well, two weeks ago, Charles Hood announced his retirement after an internal investigation showed he made vulgar comments. At the time, the union made reference to additional allegations against his administration and the culture. Tonight, they are speaking out. Fear is so pervasive in our organization now that getting our firefighters and paramedics to come and speak up and tell the truth has become excessively difficult. I as the president of the San Antonio Professional Firefighters have a duty to our members to speak on their behalf, especially when they are in fear of telling the truth. And Jones has made his own headlines as part of the SAFD administration. Back in 2017, a case and investigation looked into his demotion as assistant chief on allegations of workplace intimidation. We're going to look into that on the night beat. We're also waiting for a statement from the city and Hood about these latest allegations. Steve. Thank you, Patty. Well, it's places that help those without a home are packed with people escaping the cold. Recovery teams are seeing an opportunity here at Corazon Ministries Day Center. Volunteers can now offer resources to a larger network of people. Courtney Friedman spoke to one of those volunteers who said that his sobriety started in that very room. Day at a time. Jesus Perez spends almost every day connecting with unsheltered people at Corazon Ministries Day Center. Born and raised in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. Uh, I started doing drugs since the age of around eight years old. Eighteen? Eight. Eight years old? Eight years old. Wow. During those 50 years of drug use, he spent time in federal prison. I did so many years watching gangs and all that, and now I'm doing the right thing. Finally. His one year of sobriety began in this very room. I used to be here as a client. I used to uh, come and talk to my recovery coach. Now he's a recovery coach, guiding others every day. I, this, I like to volunteer a lot. Yeah, this place does a lot of good things for everybody. The recovery volunteers huddled in a quick meeting as the day center swelled to 230 people there to get food, clothes and rest, presenting an opportunity for the team to help people who don't usually come in for resources. If my stomach is rumbling and I haven't eaten on, and you're talking to me about being sober, I'm not going to hear you until I can be calm. Day center director Brittany Ackerson knows. Will you be here Monday so I can help you do idea recovery? Yes. Okay. Because she's been in their shoes. She's now 10 years sober. Being unsheltered before and having substance use, um, we kind of pull together as family. She says her recovery team can get people into any service they need. They need detox. We can do treatment. If they want treatment, we can help them get health insurance. Every current volunteer has used those services, and they say the main key to receiving help is trust. I have a lot of people that I know. People that I've been out there with, and they trust me, and I can trust in them. Using his own experience to help others gain the gifts of sobriety and a second chance. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Somebody who's been where they have. Now, if you need to go to it, or excuse me, if you don't need to go to a shelter, but you do need a place where you can go and stay warm for a little while, there are warming centers all over the city and county. Now, some of those operate during the day. Others are also open overnight. In some cases, the city's also providing some free transportation to get to those warm places. Scan the QR code you see here for a complete list of where you can stay warm. You can also find those locations on KSAT.com. The Biden administration is asking the Supreme Court for help in its dispute with the state of Texas over some land along the border. Texas seized a city park in Eagle Pass and is now denying entry to Border Patrol agents there. Late last night, the Department of Justice filed a request to the Supreme Court to grant federal agents entry to a portion along the Rio Grande that is now occupied by the Texas National Guard and the military. This follows months of tension between Governor Abbott and President Biden, which reached a new high last week following the drowning deaths of a young Mexican mother and her two children. 
The prosecution calls it a cold-blooded murder. The defense says someone ordered him to do it. Today was the first day of the Hilson Avilar Rodriguez capital murder trial. Avilar Rodriguez is accused of killing Nicholas Milanovic and Julia Wright in September of 2018 while they were sleeping. The prosecution says the killings were motivated by drugs and money. During testimony today, Avila Rodriguez's girlfriend at the time took the stand. She says she didn't know that he owned a gun, but then told attorneys she told him to take the gun out of their apartment. Did you want Jilson Avila Rodriguez to have a firearm in your apartment? No. And you told them that? Yes. Testimony is expected to continue tomorrow morning at 9.30. If convicted, Abila Rodriguez will automatically be sentenced to life in prison without parole. You can watch this trial live on KSAT.com or any of our streaming platforms. Check out traffic out there right now with your traffic authority. Let's go to 410 and Blanco Road. and You can see traffic moving along very smoothly. Usually actually busier than this on both the Axis Road and 410 westbound, which is what you're looking at. So... Maybe a lot of people just staying home or taking their time as they're out and about on this Tuesday. Yeah, I bet staying home and warm is yeah. probably the goal. Republicans vying to be president have completed their work in Iowa and are shifting their attention to New Hampshire now. The latest on the race to the White House next on the News at 6. As San Antonio sees its first cold snap of the year, several local schools reporting problems with keeping their buildings warm. In one case, classes called off today at one campus with another bitter cold morning on the way. Parents asking if school will be in session tomorrow. We're going to explore that question tonight on the Night Beat at 10. It's cold outside, but the race for the White House heating up. Republican hopefuls Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis shifting their attention to the state of New Hampshire now, where voters will head to the polls next week. Former President Donald Trump, fresh off a historic Iowa caucus victory, also picking up an endorsement after another Republican dropped out. Ike Jachi reports from D.C. Former President Donald Trump, fresh off his commanding 30-point victory in Monday's Iowa caucuses, now focusing on the New Hampshire primary. The big night is going to be in November when we take back our country and truly we do make our country great again. I don't think it took a, uh, an oracle to know that we're just going through the motions and that uh, President Trump is the nominee. The Iowa caucuses narrowing the Republican field, with Vivek Ramaswamy bowing out of the race, then endorsing Trump. And now, former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, who is openly critical of Trump, suspending his campaign after coming in fifth place in the caucuses, securing just 190 votes. They threw everything but the kitchen sink at me uh, during, this, during this process. Runner-up Governor Ron DeSantis taking his second-place finish to New Hampshire, where he looks to overtake Nikki Haley in the state. Polls showing Haley within striking distance of Donald Trump. Nikki Haley said only the top two from Iowa, you know, go on to be viable. Well, guess what? We punched our ticket out of Iowa yesterday. Meanwhile, Haley now saying she will only participate in the next presidential debate if Trump or President Biden is involved, leaving DeSantis as the only candidate committed to Thursday's event so far. Americans don't want to see Trump or Biden. The majority of Americans disprove of both of them. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. So with that debate in mind, ABC and KSAT 12 were set to broadcast the next Republican primary debate this Thursday. It's in, since been canceled after the Trump and Haley campaign teams failed to confirm that they would attend. Trump has yet to participate in any of the Republican debates so far. And while Haley announced this morning she will not participate in another debate unless it's against President Joe Biden or against former President Donald Trump. January is National Blood Donor Month. What better way to ring in a new year than to save lives with the help of KSAT Community and University Health. The blood supply is critically low right now and just one donation could help up to three patients in need. If you want to donate for the first time or if you are a seasoned pro, just visit DonateBloodToday.com to schedule a time to donate. All right, we've been talking about the cold snap and the fact that at least this first round should be over after tomorrow. Yeah, soon, but we got to yeah. get through tomorrow morning first, Adam. 
We have some ups and downs in the temperature department on the way. And yes, tonight is going to be the coldest night of this cold snap. So tonight, tomorrow morning, the coldest we've had yet, and actually the coldest since December of 2022. Let's get to our headlines. We do have a brief warm up on Thursday where we jump into the 60s, but the key word there, brief because by Friday uh, we get windy and cooler. However, we do have a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of rain chances, some needed rainfall is on the way. Look at our temperature trend here going forward tomorrow morning right around 16 downtown, even cooler in outlying areas. We'll get into those details in a moment, but I do want to point out even thereafter we will be right near freezing Thursday morning and Friday morning. Then by Saturday we see morning temperatures back in the mid 20s, which is another hard freeze on the way. So don't plan on making any big changes of putting all the plants back out yet until we get into early next week. That's when it's going to be safe to do so at night. Now we do have some photos that have come in on KSAC Connect of some situations we run into with our freezing conditions around here. Here's a good reminder to turn off your sprinkler system. First of all, we don't really need to water this time of year. The grass isn't really going to grow, but also it can cause the icy conditions, which can be beautiful. Don't get me wrong and kind of picturesque, but also can be very problematic because that water from the sprinklers that are automatically timed can get on the roadways and immediately turn to ice. We saw some of that earlier today, especially in uh, commercial buildings and commercial properties. So the set it and forget it. How about unset it and forget it until uh, we really warm up? Bird bass, of course, a little bit frozen out there. And here's a bird drinking, trying to find some fresh water out there that's not frozen. Looks like got into a little bit of it today, but whatever wasn't running and ran off. Definitely froze. I have more photos coming up uh, later on at 645. Current temperatures across the state just below average for the most part. 20s in the Panhandle, 23 Dallas, 30 in Austin, 31 Junction. Here in San Antonio, right on the edge, officially at the airport at 33. 32 Victoria, 32 New Braunfels. We're seeing these temperatures fall off quickly. And by 7 a.m. tomorrow, we're talking teens. 12 in Hondo, 12 in Kerrville, 12 in Canyon Lake, Pleasanton at 14, Elmendorf at 12, Stone Oak 15, Timberwood Park starting the day at 12 degrees. So very cold in the morning, but luckily calm. You don't have to worry about the wind chill. You're not going to feel a breeze, and that does make a difference, even if it's just psychological. By noon, we're up to 39, and 4 o'clock, 45 degrees. So warming up nicely tomorrow. 48 Lackland, 46 Converse, Elmendorf, 48 tomorrow. Notice we get near 70 on Thursday, but then another cold front hits. And by Friday, we're back down into the 40s for afternoon highs. Not only that, in, back into the 40s and cooler on Friday, but turning windy. Look at our forecast for the winds behind that next cold front. Gusting again up to 40 miles per hour Friday morning behind that next cold front. So turning windy and colder. Quick look at our pattern. Quiet here. The activity is the West Coast and parts of New England where they have some snow, but another system coming on shore that is not heading our way, but one on its heels will, and that boosts our rainfall potential for early next week. We're talking Monday time frame. We boosted these rain chances up to 60%. Late Sunday, 20%. Monday, we're up to 60%. And then next Tuesday at 30%. So it is looking promising and the pattern is looking more favorable for some rain as we get into the early part of next week. Got more photos coming up for you and much more information on this chill in just a bit. I'm already thinking about what the kids are going to wear tomorrow morning. What's everyone wearing <laughs> to school? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, layers, a lot of layers. That's probably not what you're thinking. Layer up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're talking about Texas State. They've had great success in the last year, but who's going to play quarterback for them, Mary? That's still really a big question. Well, two weeks ago, TJ Finley, their quarterback who elevated them to new heights, said he was the Houston Texans, lost another receiver early in their wild card win over the Browns. The latest Texans roster move after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm.
This Saturday, rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the odds-on favorite to win the NFL MVP, Lamar Jackson. The four-seed Texans and one-seed Ravens are certainly an intriguing matchup going into the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. And as we know, the Texans have taken some big hits to its receiving core this season, the most notable being rookie Tank Dell and the latest being wide out Noah Brown. Brown has been placed on the injured reserve with a shoulder injury. So today Houston signed Steven Sims off its Praska squad to the 53 man roster. D'Amico Ryans talks about losing Brown and what the addition of Sims will bring to the team. It's really tough losing Noah. Noah has been great for us all year. All right, when he's been there and been available and Noah's made me Clutch, clutch plays and critical moments, big time plays. Steve brings a uh, dynamic ability in a return game, which I think that will help us uh, this week. Also, just being able to utilize him in offense as well with his speed, his playmaking ability. All right, we'll see it all unfold this Saturday. The Texans visit the Ravens as nine point underdogs in Baltimore, where the forecast is calling for highs in the mid 20s around kickoff, which is 330 locally. The game is being broadcasted here on KSAT 12 and Houston's odds to win the AFC championship are plus 1300. Next month, Indianapolis will be the host site for the 2024 NBA All-Star Weekend. And while we don't know yet the All-Star Game rosters, Spurs 7 foot 3 rookie Victor Wembanyama will be in the mix regardless as he plans to participate in the Skills Challenge on February 17th and will almost certainly be fe featured in the Rising Stars Challenge. Wembanyama sharing his gratitude. So it's for sure something I want to do in my life, and it's, I'm glad it happens already. Trey Jones on the move. It'll be fun to see Wemby showing off his ball handling skills, footwork, all of it, but that's still one month away. Right now, the Spurs are on a road trip, five games. They fell to the Hawks yesterday, and tomorrow they'll take on the 31-9 and Celtics. That game will tip off at 6.30. It up the NCAA transfer portal as a grad transfer with two more years of eligibility. Finley has previously worn LSU, Auburn, and of course, Texas State threads. Yesterday, former Arizona QB Jaden Delora announced he's transferring to the Bobcats program, and it's being reported Finley wasn't aware of Delora's commitment prior to the announcement. So disappointing if you're a Texas State fan. Yeah, it, it is, and it seems like, you know, the communication maybe wasn't there like it should have been on yeah. both sides. This transfer portal, anything can happen, yes. and this is the result of that. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you, Mary. We'll be right back.